What's a turbion? I mean, I don't know. I had to go and look it up. <laughs> uh, but that's what we're going to talk about today because Breitling has a new turbion out and I got to have a look at it the other week. And whilst it was very, very cool, I don't know if I'd buy one, but that's going to come later in the video. But let's talk turbion. <music> So a turbion is what they call a mechanical complication found in movements for certain high-end uh, mechanical watches. And it was invented during the era of the pocket watch. And it's kind of a hypnotic and fascinating little complication. And then the purpose of the turbion was to address an issue that many mechanical watches have with regards to the way physics, which I'm terrible at by the way, so I find it quite ironic I'm gonna explain this to you because I'm really not going to understand it but anyway because the physics affects the precision and accuracy of their movements because gravity is a force that creates a drag on which movement when they're in certain position. In 1795 which is a very long time ago Abraham Louis Breguet developed the mechanical mechanism that we call the tourbillon. Now some people actually say that um, to say a turbion is a complication is actually incorrect. Now, I don't want to get into that debate because you guys know I'm not an expert. I just want to note that some people are going to get in the comments and go, a turbion is not a complication. So it basically doesn't add anything to the watch. It just actually, um, I guess in layman's terms, improves the accuracy of the movement. So. I'll leave it there, I'll let you guys decide, but I'm just flagging that for the diehard people out there who are gonna pick me up on that. Breitling have got the premier tourbillon in a series, so if you love mechanics and the magic of watchmaking, this might be a watch for you. Uh, and there's three of them, and they're named after each of the founders of Breitling, being Leon, Gaston, and Willie. And they feature the stylized square pushes and Arabic numerals that are hallmarks of the Premier line. Their symmetrical dial design, harmonious interplay of numerals and tone on tone colorways perfectly balance the undisputed star of the show, the Turbion, which is at center stage at 12 o'clock. Now, I actually think it looks really unbalanced <laughs> as a watch. In fact, when I was in the store and talking to the store manager, we kind of agreed on that point a little bit. Um, but in any event, it's there. It, it's not that it doesn't work completely. It just it just isn't amazing. If, and we'll, we'll get into it in a, a little bit. But um, look, there's an open sapphire crystal case back and it's domed for full appreciation of the B21 movement. And it's got oscillating weight and tourbillon, which appears in contrasting um, metals depending on which which one it is so the Leon Breitling model has an 18 karat rose gold case with a silver dial and brown semi shiner alligator strap at $57,000 these are US prices by the way and Gaston his edition is an 18 karat white gold with an athracite dial and black alligator strap and it's 57 and the Willy Breitling version is platinum with an admiral blue dial and black alligator strap at 67. So it's about 90, 95,000 Australian guys. Yeah, I mean 67 US is also a car, just so we're clear. But um, yeah, shit, that's very expensive. <laughs> and look, uh, out of all those three, and I, from memory, yeah, I didn't get to see the rose gold it was sold, but that would actually be my my choice, believe it or not, out of the colors. And then I would say the platinum because I thought the gray one was just boring, flat out boring. I thought it was a really odd choice of color um, matching. So you've got this 18 karat white gold with gray. Yeah, I mean the platinum and the blue is much better just in terms of like the look and the feel. But I wonder with white gold, I, I mean, I know the rose gold kind of went a, a cream with it, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, the gray was a bad choice. Maybe a green, actually, actually a green would have looked a lot better and that would have really popped and looked amazing. But the gray, not the gray, anywho. 
gold. It says it's a silver dial, but um, it kind of looks uh, it kind of looks creamy, and so it just works, but not the grey. <laughs> um, look, so they're cost certified. They're not an in-house movement, so I think it's really important to note this because people get really um, tetchy about all this kind of stuff, right? So the movement is a little bit different, right? Because it's a B twenty one chronograph movement so it's the caliber 21 but it was developed in collaboration with the la joue pere or per pere pere la joue pere anyway it doesn't matter they actually created the turbion movement not brightling so it's a collab it's not a hundred percent brightling movement i guess you'd say because they haven't created the the, the turbion part of it and then we go back to the argument about complication versus just uh, an improvement or an addition to a movement. Um, I'm really layman's terms here, but you get what I'm saying, right? So, um, but that's fine. I mean, it's totally fine to have someone else develop the tourbillon. I mean, it's not a brigade. And needless to say, given they invented the, their complication, as we're calling it, they make a lot of tourbillons, but um, other watch companies don't. I think if you're looking for a tourbillon watch, because they're so expensive, right? This Breitling one, price point wise, is probably not too bad. Now that's not to say it's not ridiculously expensive, because it is, but most tourbillons are. So that's, you know, if you're in that price point anyway, you know, give the Premier tourbillon a look because it is actually a really nice watch. It, it was a perfect, like I said, I think where they've located the tourbillon at the 12 o'clock probably doesn't quite balance for me because I've got OCD and it just looked off. You know, another comment when I was in the store is perhaps it should have just been a skeleton dial as well to show off the entire movement. Maybe that would have been a better, as, as the term was used to me, a better flex, perhaps. Um, but maybe it's the watch for someone who doesn't want to do that flex because you'd go and probably buy a Nublot if you wanted to flex like that, right? So it might be the understated watch for someone who really just truly knows what a tourbillon is and, and the ingenuity and the amazing um, mechanics that go into it, but they don't really need to show off about it. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I saw the white gold and the platinum, the rose gold was actually sold. I think I would have liked the rose gold the most. The platinum was a beautiful watch, but for like $90,000, $95,000, as opposed to like, I think it's about 10 grand cheaper for the others, is it worth that much? Well, definitely I wouldn't buy the 85 grand for the gray. We've already talked about that. But yeah, ingenuity wise, I think it's a good, um, addition to the premier range i really like the brightling premier range i've talked about the detora the salmon dial before how it's a great alternative to the the patek um i know it's not a patek but you guys know if you watch that video you'll understand what i'm talking about um dress watch wise i mean my wife has one she absolutely loves it and people actually comment and ask all the time ironically she has the africate or the gray dial um, on hers and it works really well but yeah I just not for a tourbillon I think not for that watch but yeah I mean you guys tell me what you think tourbillons are not really my favorite watch and it's not just because of the price point I just I don't think I appreciate well I appreciate the ingenuity of it but I don't appreciate that enough to be in that price point for that kind of watch if that makes sense um, I would prefer and people to get like a, a calendar perpetual um, Panerai in like a gold tech or something, which again, it's a probably about the 80, 85,000 price point Australian. But I mean, they're all just wishful thinking, right? I mean, that's a grail watch for me. That's a ton of money. Um, you know, so I'm not going out tomorrow and getting that watch. <laughs> but I certainly wouldn't be buying this tourbillon over that watch, if you know what I mean. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, I mean, let me know your thoughts on a tourbillon. Uh, tell me if I'm absolutely batty and I should be like buying every single one that I see that looks amazing and is within sort of reach. Again, this is not in reach, but you know what I'm saying. Um, or tell me whether you think they're an utter waste of money because I think that would be an interesting conversation even more so. <laughs> Until next time, do me a favor. If you stayed this long, you obviously liked it. <laughs> Subscribe, like, share, tell your friends, share, all those things. 
I appreciate it. And until next time, have an awesome week.